You know when you're trying to leave a Zoom meeting in a semi-cool slash normal way and not be the last one left in the meeting? Then you click the leave meeting button and you're waving goodbye, but then the second leave meeting button pops up and you're still waving goodbye for an unnecessarily long amount of time. And at this point, your last shred of dignity has left your body. Saying hello in a YouTube video is like that feeling on steroids. Hello, my name is Ashima and you're watching my channel Aesthetic Academic. For any newbies, I started this channel because a few years ago, I actually got kicked out of university. And then a few years after that, I managed to get accepted into a medical degree at Australia's best university. So I thought that was a story of hope that was worth sharing. I post videos every Monday and they're a mixture of vlogs like this one and more informative how-to videos about how you can get into medicine yourself. I've been at a loss for words for how to express this next part, but I'll start with thank you. Thank you for everyone who subscribed to my channel, everyone who's watched my videos, everyone who's clicked onto my videos and then decided that's not for them. Thank you so much for helping us get to 1000 subscribers. That is a huge milestone for me and when I set that goal for myself at the start of the year, it sounded very big and I just wasn't sure if I was going to make it. There have been several occasions this year where I've been feeling so fatigued and feeling like I can't do it and then it's like you guys just know when exactly to message me. I have been so lucky to receive such wonderful messages about how my videos were the glimmer of hope that people needed to take that leap of faith in themselves and pursue medicine. And in a cyclical way, we helped each other. This message is one that really made my day a few months ago. Hey there, thanks for the follow. I just wanted to message you to say that I've been watching your YouTube videos and I found them so inspiring. I did a med science degree a few years ago and I've been debating back and forth for ages whether to pursue medicine. I sat the GAMS out in 2018 on a whim with no prep and to be expected I did pretty bad. I did quite well in my degree because I worked really hard, however I never considered myself someone naturally smart as I didn't do overly well throughout school. After learning your story I realized I had convinced myself that I am too old slash falling behind everyone else my age even though I'm only 23 and I'm just not built to be one of those people that can do well at the GAMSAT and get into medicine both of which are nothing but excuses. I freaking love the honesty in that and admitting where she was making excuses for herself and I just think that is so powerful and I'm so proud that my videos can help someone to identify that. I find it just so wholesome and heartwarming and I think that the more people from different walks of life are trying to be doctors, the better. What has absolutely gobsmacked me is the sheer volume of people who've been able to resonate with me and my story and my videos. In the scheme of YouTube, I have a very modest but awesome subscriber base. It makes me excited to think how many more people I can have a positive impact on by growing my channel. It really drives me to be able to tell people, yes, I believe in you. I think you can do this. I think you're good enough. And to help people see that in themselves. It takes guts to even admit that you're chasing an ambitious goal. And I'm so proud of you for not letting fear of failure or fear of embarrassment rule your current or future life. Now that I've made it to 1000 subs, my next goal is getting to 10,000 subs, which Sounds really far away and borderline ridiculous right now. But then again, so did studying medicine when my only qualification was making hot dogs. And that wasn't even that long ago. My initial plan last week was to make a video about me catching up on my content because I had fallen behind because I made a rookie error and neglected the work that I had that wasn't going to be on the exam and said I'd do it later. And then I fell behind. Basically, since my last exam two weeks ago, I've been behind that whole time. And I've been making excuses for myself about why I'm behind and how it's okay and blah, blah, blah. But I'm actually so fucking tired of my excuses. It's bullshit. I decided against making that video because I know a lot of you guys watching are prospective medical students. And I didn't want to portray myself as someone who could just coast by, have bad study habits and still manage to get into medicine because that's not the truth. I think by portraying that narrative, I would be perpetuating the myth that med students have to be gifted or are gifted. The truth is I was never behind in undergrad. This is only the second time I've been behind this year in medicine. One being when we transitioned from classroom learning to online learning. In summary, I do not recommend falling behind at uni. It sucks. I'm almost caught up, but not quite, so I'm not going to give myself any credit yet. For those of you who watch my exam study video, I actually got my marks back the other day and I'll talk about that a bit later in the video. I'm at the tail end of uni right now. We're in our neuro block and this is the penultimate block of the year. After this block, we have reproductive block. Then we have something called intersystems, which is just all of the different organ systems tying together. And then that's it for first year. All of our teachers this year had been signposting how difficult NeuroBlock was going to be. So I did feel kind of mentally prepared for the tsunami of information that we received. 
And it has been challenging, yes, because the brain is a big ball of goop, which is simultaneously the most complex thing known to man. I've really enjoyed the biomedical side of neuro, but I've also found it profound profoundly depressing in other ways, which I'll get to in a little bit. One of our lecturers described the texture of a fresh brain as Vegemite that has been put in the fridge for a little bit. What I really like about neuro is the variety of stuff you learn in that topic, because you learn about the ear and you learn about the eye and you learn about the nose and the vocal cords, all of that. Even though that's a lot of information that you're getting, it's so fresh day to day that it is really quite captivating. As complicated as the brain is and how much there is to know about it biomedically and anatomically, the hardest part for me is how it makes me confront my mortality. There have been several graphs that I've seen that are now etched into my brain so deep I can't get them out. A lot of these graphs have to do with the fact that your cognition peaks in your late 20s, early 30s, and then just declines from there. Another really horrific graph that I remember seeing was one with a line for um, the part of your brain that's responsible for goal setting. That part of your brain doesn't really finish growing until I think it was mid to mid 20s and then it plateaus for a while, and then at 45, it starts to decline, and then that just declines until you die. I'm grateful for that decline because I wouldn't want to be about to die and feel like there was so much I still wanted to do. That would be horrible. It just feels really stark to see it in graph form. And especially when I think back to this last year, I think, oh, this year went so quickly then they're all gonna be like that and then I'm gonna be dead. I had a similar feeling last year when I read the book Being Mortal. It's a wonderful book, it's about end of life care and it's really beautifully written, but there is something inside me that is really uncomfortable about dealing with my own decline. I have a hypothesis about why I have these intense feelings. The last part of your brain to grow is the prefrontal cortex, which is the part that is just at the front here. And that's responsible for your executive function, which includes things like future planning. The prefrontal cortex stops developing around your mid twenties. When my prefrontal cortex finished developing, that was the same time that my dad died and also Right after that, I went through a bunch of health issues myself. So now when my brain sees figures about decline and death and stuff like that, I think it's like TikTok bitch, like you're about to go. That is certainly something that I wanna to work towards eliminating, but I think I'm gonna suppress it until after the pandemic's over because that just sounds well, way too hard. I've been using Anki flashcards for about four to five months now. And I did a considerable amount of research on them before I started using them. And I still think I'm using them suboptimally. That just really highlights for me how much of a lifelong journey studying medicine is. I think it'll take me at least two years of workshopping my study schedule to have some really good systems going. I'm really big into having systems in my life. Like I'm always trying to find ways where I can think the bare minimum amount. For example, I plan all my meals out about six weeks in advance so I just don't have to think about them. Aiming to come up with a systematic amount and way that I can study is really appealing to me because then I don't have to think extra about how to study. I can just get on with it. So much like a teenage boy on his first encounter with a girl, there's definitely a sweet spot in Anki that I'm just not hitting. I make cards as I'm watching the lectures the first time, but the problem is that the first time I watch a lecture or approach a subject, I think I don't get about 70% of the content. I'll only understand it when I go back and look at it. And that's a recipe for making really shit cards because I haven't quite understood the concepts yet, but I'm trying to make questions about something I don't completely understand. And when I, when I go back and review the cards, then my knowledge feels really fragmented and superficial. I'm so looking forward to seeing my classmates again because this is the exact problem that would be wonderful to workshop with them. I know a lot of people have been trying to learn how to use Anki and it would just be great to like touch base with everyone and see how everyone else is doing it. I need to sit down with a neuro textbook soon, I think, because while I have a bunch of fragmented facts floating around in my head, I don't really understand how they relate to each other very well yet. So I think I need to just go over all the concepts together so my mind can kind of place the flashcards in relation to one another. Any time away from a computer right now feels so luxurious. So I am looking forward to doing that. I got my mark back for my exam that I was studying for the other week. So they just released our grades for Cat 3 and I'm about to check them and I'm really scared. This is the worst part about studying. I'm like really, really nervous right now. Oh, I think that's good. Calculator. Oh, that's, you know, it's not what I was aiming for, but that's pretty good. 
Oh, I feel so relieved. Okay, sweet. At least I improved from last time. As you can tell, I was so psyched to receive my mark. It wasn't the 75 that I'd been aiming for, but it was better than my previous score. So I was really jacked to receive it. A couple of hours later, the teacher sent out the class average and it turns out the class average was 75. And then I realized that I'm a fucking idiot and not because I got below the class average. I'm stupid for letting that bother me even momentarily. Being below average in a cohort that is as spectacular as my med cohort is, is a massive achievement in itself. By virtue of being in a class, there is going to be someone who's at the bottom of it. And that person is a 10 out of 10 student and is going to be a spectacular doctor. While I know these things are facts, it is so ingrained in my brain to compare myself to the mean. I have to consciously remind myself to extinguish those unhelpful thoughts. I'm getting better at doing that and pausing to correct my mind has been really effective. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and comment because it really helps with the algorithm. As always, if you have any questions or you just want to say hi, I reply to all my comments and all my Instagram DMs. And I hope you have an awesome week. Thank you.